Happy Tuesday. Happy Black History Month to all the black people in the room. <laughs> Kidding, to everyone. Happy, happy Black History Month. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thanks for having us. Uh, so I am Daryl Holliday, a co-founder and news up director at City Bureau. Um, Pat Sire, I'm a web developer at City Bureau. Uh, feel free to follow along if you want to check out our website, cb.org, uh, and here is our social media information. So uh, we're just going to do some introductions for people who don't know about City Bureau and then get into uh, the documenter's website and, and what we're up to the last year, year and a half. <laughs> yeah. City Bureau's mission is to bring journalists and communities together in a collaborative spirit to produce media that is impactful, equitable, and responsive to the public. We do that in three ways. We have three programs. Uh, the first is our Civic Reporting Fellowship. Uh, we bring together emerging journalists and more experienced journalists, partner them together. They work collaboratively in our newsroom at Woodlawn and produce content that is uh, published with a variety of different outlets locally, nationally. That is paid, actually. Uh, uh, the application just went up today for the cycle beginning in March. So if you're interested, take a look. Please apply. Our public newsroom uh, is a weekly, public, free workshop, not unlike the one you're at now, uh, but more focused on media and media-adjacent topics. Uh, so it's a lot like what it sounds like. We open up our physical space once a week to the public. And lastly, which we'll spend more time talking about right now, is our, our documenters program. So in a nutshell, we train and pay people, anyone, to attend and document public meetings. Uh, that involves us democratizing journalistic skills. So we do trainings in social media, taking notes, interviewing, using your phone as a audio, video, recording device, so on and so forth. People go, they get paid, they produce content that is published on documenters.org. I'll get to that in a second. We usually get the question, who are the documenters? So I'm gonna go do that real quick. They are mostly women. They are 61% female, 38% male, 1% non-binary. Uh, they look like the city of Chicago, with the exception of our Latinx population. I think it could be much bigger. My guess is that it has a lot to do with the uh, Spanish-speaking uh, quality of the work. We need to do better at uh, building resources, outreach to the community. So this has been helpful for identifying uh, how to make the documentary program look more like the city. They come from 75% roughly of the city's community areas, so they are all over the place. And when we ask them why they want to become documenters, the top reasons that they want to develop new skills, the seconds that they want to be more involved in their community, so on and so forth. I want to make some money. I was just curious about City Bureau. I want to become a journalist. Uh, so about two years ago, we took over the documenters program as it was at Smart Chicago and reframed it for a civic journalism lab. We began with a collaboration uh, we called the Task Force Tracker. We basically, I don't remember the police task force, the uh, police accountability task force report that came out. No. Yeah. You remember, yeah. It was about like a 200 page document, like most things the city produce. Uh, it comes out and it just gets filed somewhere. What we did was took Rap Genius and brought together lawyers, students, journalists, organizers, and had them use Rap Genius to annotate the entire task force report. The idea being, how can we make this a living document that is useful beyond just the moment that it drops into the future? We use that as an educational tool with students around the city, uh, and that kicked off several other trackers. But what it really did was got us thinking about how this crowdsourced, citizen-led uh, effort could be really use in a different way? How could it reach its potential, basically? Which led us to thinking about public meetings, uh, very important spaces for democracy. Uh, local government bodies hold thousands of meetings every day, but as you may know, they receive little media coverage and they produce minimal records. Our solution was fairly simple. Take documenters, the idea, the concept, the process, and apply it to public meetings. Uh, as in, can we have a person at every single public meeting making it on the record, 
producing records that don't currently exist. Uh, that led us to another problem, which is where are all the public meetings happening? They are spread across dozens of different websites. Uh, so we began a process in August 2017 of scraping, standardizing, and sharing information on all of those public meetings, which involves uh, how many scrapers are there total? I think like 79 at this point? Yeah, building around 79 web scrapers. Uh, I won't read all the names out. Some of the folks are in here. I just wanted to give a huge shout out because this group of folks from August 2017 to August 2018 helped us build what would become documentaries.org. And that included meeting uh, bi-monthly, uh, sometimes weekly, engaging on Slack, and creating the 70, 69, 79? 70-ish scrapers that exist today. So thank you again for that. I know I see some of y'all in the room. Yes, can I give a big hand for Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. I had a video here, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna play it. If you wanna see it, I'll show it to you later. It's a really good video. Point is, documentaries.org exists, uh, built essentially on that foundation, uh, plus the many, many, many hours that Pat put into developing uh, what has become uh, a standardized source for locations, dates, times, official records of essentially every meeting holding body that we know of in Chicago and Detroit and some in Pittsburgh. Uh, so part of what we're gonna do tonight at the breakout group is get into, we're gonna say something? No. Uh, okay. Get into bringing more folks into that process. There is still more work to do. We have found uh, all of the SSA meeting, anyway, I'll get into it later. We found way more meeting, meetings that could be added to the website. Uh, since we launched the site in January, January 8th, uh, we have heard from well over a dozen cities essentially asking, how do we get this where we live? Uh, the problem that we've seen in Chicago with meetings being spread across many, many websites exists everywhere. I have not found a single place yet where meetings at the local, county, and state level are presented in one single place where residents can access it and more easily find out where that information, where the meetings are happening, what meeting minutes exist, what agendas exist. Uh, so what we've been able to do is streamline all of that into this fire hose information. Every day we're getting, what, is dozens too many? Depends on the day, um, but generally we're getting a ton of different meetings from different sources, uh, different agencies, um, and just to clarify, they're legally required to post this information, uh, including on their website, so it isn't just something where it's kind of an extra add-on, like this is actually a legal requirement for at least in Illinois and pretty much all over the country. It's a legal requirement, and they are, a lot of organizations are in uh, violation of the OM. <laughs> the OM Entirely. Act. Yeah, so we're able to see that because for the first time we've centralized all that information into one place. I'm gonna hand it over to Pat here to talk more about the nitty gritty and a bit of the code. Yeah, so at this point we've scraped over 9,000 meetings and kind of growing every day. And just to note, that's also going back in time. That's not just since the year, year and a half ago that we started. This is, we have CHA meetings and minutes going back to 2001, because that's all on their site. Um, I mean, city council going back relatively far as well, so a lot of different information there, and that's for Chicago, Detroit, um, and also Pittsburgh. Uh, Bonnie Fan, who's uh, been at Hack Night before, uh, went to grad school at Carnegie Mellon and started up there, so kind of one example of just it spreading a bit. And so, yeah, when we say that there's a lot of public agencies, uh, as most people should know here, government's really complicated. Um, everything from the Low Income Housing Trust Fund the Forest Preserve District, um, things like the O'Hare and Midway Noise Compatibility Commissions, which we just found. And yeah, just as a kind of indication of how many there are, we've been doing this for about a year and a half, and on Sunday we found 30 that we hadn't even heard of or hadn't even been seeing. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a lot of layers to this. Uh, and I should add quickly that one of the very practical reasons we found coders were interested in this project is because we have people, these documenters, going to these meetings every single week. Uh, so any scrapers that are built 
lead almost immediately to people going out and bringing information back to the public? Yeah, like just today, somebody went to the Low Income Housing Trust Fund meeting and documented it, and it was actually a total of five minutes from when it was called to order and when it was adjourned. It was an entirely five minute meeting. Um, so you get some really interesting information from this that doesn't come from the site alone because we have people actually showing up. So kind of getting to more of the tech setup, it's really simple and I think that was part of the priority. We didn't want to kind of build something that was focused on the engineering. We wanted to make it as simple as possible so that we could run it simply, but also if somebody wants to spin it up in their area, it's you can run it virtually for free. So we've just got um, web scrapers in Python. Um, we're just running it on Travis CI, which is kind of a service for running automated tests and kind of uh, background tasks, which uh, is free for open source projects. Um, then it's just writing static files, um, not necessarily to a database directly, but we're pulling those in to uh, documenters.org. So you could pull in the same information that we're pulling in. Um, you could do it on a site that doesn't necessarily have a backend and is just kind of referring to the daily output. So we really uh, wanted to make it as easy as possible for people to run this without cost or complexity being much of an issue. So, so yeah, and that's kind of uh, been part of our goal in expanding. So mostly we focused on Chicago and Detroit, and Detroit was a case where we really contracted that out to, uh, to developers kind of to um, start up a pilot program of documenters in Detroit, which we'd had a grant for. So that was a bit of a different case. But in general, we really want the focus to be um, people kind of taking it up on their own and running with it, not necessarily us running that program directly. Um, so that's why we've had some of the resources on GitHub. Um, all you really need to do is fork a template repo we have set up and create scrapers. Uh, we'll host um, the static file output for free for folks if that's a barrier, if they're just kind of concerned about who's going to put that bill on their credit card. Um, and then people can adapt it to their use case and interest. If people want to make a different client application for it, if people are really focused on education and those are the only meetings they want to cover, um, they can do that. And that's not something that kind of we're interested in controlling, given that we're really focused on meetings that are covered by the Open Meetings Act, and that might not be everyone's priority. So yeah, um, that kind of gets to where you all come in. Um, what we need are I mean, first and foremost, documenters. Um, we're kind of ramping trainings back up again now that the app is launched. Um, and we need people to go out to those meetings. And I mean, we had meetings where they were closed because of the cold and the documenters still showed up and saw that it was closed last week during the Polar Vortex. Um, volunteers um, to kind of focus on writing some of these scrapers, but also some research tasks. Like, like I said, we've missed some stuff along the way. Um, so a lot of it is things where we need to call a government agency and find out what's going on, find out why something isn't posted, um, or kind of find out more about uh, the information that is there. Um, but also to write the scrapers themselves. Um, we've got a lot more scrapers that need to be written, um, both for Chicago and Detroit, um, as well as Illinois, Cook County. Um, and yeah, I mentioned some of that research. So we have a City Scraper Slack. Um, it's a channel on the City Bureau Slack, but the Hackmate Slack could also work too. Um, the City Scrapers Toolkit, which is really kind of more of a comprehensive guide. Uh, it's the code documentation, but also more the documentation around why do the project, things you need to consider, things we've learned. And then, uh, yeah, documenters.org. Um, once you write a scraper, uh, if it's for Chicago or Detroit, uh, the next day it'll be alive on the site. Um, there's no real additional barrier to that. It's just once it's scraping meetings, we'll pull them in. Um, it's a little different for some of the different areas, um, like Pittsburgh, but in general, yeah, there's kind of an instant gratification thing going on there. Um, and pizza parties. We haven't done that in a while, but do you want to? We will throw down on some pizza parties for real. If enough people are interested, so for during the Sinscrapers coding sessions from August to August 2018, we did pizza parties every single time. So it's basically dinner with friends, but also getting a lot of good practical work done. So pizza parties. Lots of pizza parties. parties. Pizza parties. <laughs> so um, yeah. I think there's only one left. Yeah, so I guess with that, we're good for questions. Do you have? No, no, I don't have anything else. Uh, oh, I guess there's one more point. Um, for the rest of this month, so four sessions, we'll be hosting a breakout group starting tonight. Uh, so something to keep in mind. If you're interested, uh, we'll be here all month. Are there any questions? Anything we can answer? Anything I didn't talk about? <laughs> so are, <laughs> you, uh, are you hosting um, Detroit and Pittsburgh's in the same kind of uh, uh, website, or do you have separate websites set apart? 
Yeah, you want to just pull it up? Uh, Pat, I'll just pull it up while we're answering questions. Uh, they're on the same website. So there's a filter, basically like a selection tool. Yeah. Up top there, you can see Chicago of Detroit. Yeah. So you can click through. You can see all areas, or you can see the area that, that you want. Hi. Uh, Hello. What's the goal for the documenters? Is it to get them more engaged? Is it just a part-time job? Do you have any uh, insight into that? Yeah, yeah. We think about this a lot. Uh, I'll try and see if I can keep it short. Uh, the goal is civic engagement. It's The goal is not producing or turning out content. It's not replacing journalists. It's not even to make people into journalists. Uh, the goal is to repair these broken bridges between government and the public. And we think we can do that by incentivizing people, by uh, doing some civic education around uh, what these agencies do, but also by doing some investigation, by calling out where we see violations and getting people involved in that process. Uh, so yeah, the goal is civic engagement, but this tool allows us to really, I think we'll find in the coming months, this is part of the point, it was to shore up Chicago's. It was, uh, it was to allow us to coordinate more documenters than we could do manually, but we're finding that it can be applied in more cities. So we're thinking about what this looks like in Philadelphia. What does a documenters program look like in Quebec? So on, so on, so on. Can you explain how the documenters and the scrapers work together? So the scrapers are scraping minutes of meetings that are provided by city agencies, or and the documenters are like giving, providing more like contextual and substantive information, or they're providing the stuff that's yeah, yeah. It's in, in some ways they're working almost entirely separately, but in some ways they are also uh, working in parallel, depending on each other. Uh, so the scrapers are pulling, like I said, locations, dates, times, but also the meeting minutes, any official record. Documenters are producing live tweet threads. Uh, they're producing audio, video tracks. Uh, they're also producing mm, kind of templated meeting notes. So we give them some headers, just like describe the scene of the room. What did it feel like? So some, some, some subjective qualities of the space, uh, but also just... Uh, public comment periods. Like uh, when you're at a public meeting, there is almost always a public comment period where people are allowed to talk for like a minute and a half, two minutes, right? Uh, that is not often recorded in meeting minutes. Documenters will record that. So they're able to patch a lot of the holes that government agencies are not recording and fill in that gap. Have any uh, government agencies reached out to you uh, to provide, or like because they want to provide the the document, the, the information in a structured manner, so you don't have to scrape them. And is that something on your radar? It, it's it's on our radar. We we're starting at a yes and no. You know, uh, there's a, co a councilman in Binghamton, New York, who has reached out for that very point. Here in Chicago, we've had some success with say the uh, Board of Ethics. When we were looking through their site trying to scrape the meetings, we noticed, I forget what it was, but it was making it difficult for us to uh, scrape it in a way that was consistent. We reached out to them and basically just gave them some suggestions around how to make it uh, easier for us to scrape, but also very simple changes. And they were very welcome to it. So now that site is easier for us to search. So there are some successes where we are in contact with uh, folks in the city. We are talking with the Department of IT. So. I think in the future we'll see more of that, but we're already beginning to see the first steps towards what is a partnership between the City Bureau Documenters Program and a city agency really look like. How can it be fruitful? How can it be not antagonistic, but you know, uh, improve the quality of information for all of us? Do you require like technical skills or um items, I guess, for the documenters, like, do you have to, like, what do you need to qualify to be a documenter? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, two things. You have to fill out the application, which is on documenters.org, and then come to a city bureau training. So we host trainings roughly monthly, and there will be, you know, any given week there'll be a training on live tweeting social media. Another week might be meeting notes and interviewing. Uh, if you take a training in live tweeting, you are eligible for live tweeting assignments. So essentially, to become eligible for assignments, it's to apply and come to a training. And that's it. The, the bar is meant to be low so that we can get more people into it. I think there are around 
500, uh, we just were going through this today, <laughs> roughly 500 people who have applied to be documenters and about half of that who have been trained. Um, is this curriculum like available to people that are interested, uh, specifically the documenting, um, like what you guys give at the training, is that like a public PDF that someone could find? What the field guide? Uh, again, yes and no. We have a field guide on the documenters.org that has, it, it's, it was made for documenters so that when they're sitting at a meeting, they can just look through their phone and say, you know, how can I get some quick tips on live tweeting? How can I get some quick tips on how to figure out who's on this board? So in a sense, the field guide is a shorthand curriculum, but there is no yet uh, standardized published curriculum. But we've been asked enough times that it's on our radar and we are working on it. I help run a neighborhood organization site and we're looking for ways we can bolster our community calendar. Do you have any feeds or APIs that we can ingest? Yeah, this is actually, I think, the, mo like the most asked thing we've got. Um, so yeah, we do have, if you go to any of the agency pages or any of the meetings, um, you can, there's an option to subscribe to a calendar feed that you can use in Google Calendar, Outlook, um, kind of whatever calendar client that'll just update with their meetings. You can set your notifications on your own. Um, so yeah, we got that and I think that was one of the biggest things people have been looking for. What city agencies do you have solid, consistent coverage of at this point? Is there a strategy for prioritizing certain agencies or is it based on the documenter's interests? So we have a wonderful documenters field coordinator that does a lot of the work to uh, review submitted content, select meetings that we're going to, um, and generally just make sure that documenters are well taken care of. Uh, the question of how we choose meetings is a bit complicated. We are journalists by trade, so there's a certain level of just news value, you know, like, uh, is a story important to the public right now and why? Uh, but there's also just a factor of, do we know this agency produces no minutes ever? We will prioritize agencies like that. Uh, I forget the second part of the question. Uh, what was it? It was, is there a strategy for prioritizing certain agencies? Or is it based on the documenter's interests? So increasingly we are getting documenters uh, telling us which meetings they want to go to because they begin going with us or they might begin going with the neighborhood organization uh, and will end up going to more and becoming more involved in the various rabbit holes that exist with these uh, documents. Um, but yeah, it's kind of a complicated question. We're, we figure it out day by day, essentially, which meetings we go to cover. And that was the first part of that too. Uh, sorry, I keep forgetting the rest of the question. I think you Ah, okay. I think right. you answered it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. How are you thinking about sustainability uh, in terms of funding with your paying documenters and and uh, City Bureau itself? Good question. <laughs> um, City Bureau is member supported. Become a member. Help us out. Uh, we are also funded by foundations. We do some uh, consulting work, but really, what we really ideally want to do is be accountable to the public. So that means being publicly funded. Um, the Documenters program right now is getting a good deal of attention, um, not just in Chicago, but beyond. So we feel that the prospects for jumpstarting it with foundation funding is fairly positive. Um, we are interested in what public funding could look like. Uh, as newspapers are declining in towns across the country, like I mentioned, these meetings are often the first to go, but these meetings are also the bedrock of civic society, and any investigation that you've read has come from local journalism and meetings like this, it doesn't seem like it does. Uh, so it's a huge problem that the public meetings uh, are going unattended, are going undercovered. This is one way to shore up that kind of news information um, in the absence of local reporters, in collaboration with local reporters. Um, I was just curious, when you were thinking of putting this together, who was your intended audience and did you have any sort of expectations of some of the actions that they would take um, with this in mind? Intended audience for the documents.org site? 
Yeah, so I've never been to your website, but I'm looking at it now and then seeing how you're putting together the meeting notes or how you're, I'm interested to kind of see what your website actually looks like after this. Um, I just want to understand like when you're actually putting up this information originally, yeah, what intended audience were you looking to capture as to how you post your information and the information that you're collecting? Sure. Broadly speaking, we were thinking of three main groups. Um, journalists who could make use of this information in ways that support the production of better stories, better content. Um, governmental, or, or, uh, governmental agencies uh, that could use this as a model for how to make meetings more transparent and accessible. Uh, and lastly, and I'd say most importantly, community groups and people on the street who um, have interest in attending these kind of meetings but don't know where to find them. One good example is a group called Raise Your Hand in Chicago. Um, they go to the um, CPS board meetings and others uh, every month. Um, but there are so many local school councils meetings. My point being, there are so many meetings related to education, they couldn't possibly cover them all to attend to document, to bring the information back out. Uh, what this allows them to do, groups like that, groups like uh, Ray Jinglewood, take any kind of advocacy, organizing, activist group, uh, allows them to more easily prioritize and just kind of visualize a whole year's worth of, of actions, of, of movements. So those are the three main groups. And I think there's a lot of interaction and symbiosis that can be found there. And that was part of the intention of putting this all in one place and then seeing what could arise from that. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Please give it up again for documenters.org and City Bureau. Okay.